All right, so uh, I'm going to go over the software right now. Feel free to re reposition if you'd like. Or... On one computer is your standard tensile compression bending software, and on your other computer is your torsional software. So each uh, software module has a different um, different computer. All right. <clears throat> so the software to control the so, so the software to control the frame is called Trapezium X. Uh, it's located right here. Um, something else in addition to the password is that you can create different user accounts with different permissions. So for instance, if there was a test administrator that you wanted to be able to do everything on the frame, but for some instance you wanted um, a lower level of permission that maybe couldn't write methods or couldn't erase methods or couldn't you know, erase data, you could put that permission in, in there as well. Um, so just as a basic overview, we have the difference of what we call methods and tests. So methods are the condition that the test is ran under and test is the actual data itself. Um, the idea is that you write a method based off of what type of sample you're running uh, and you can reuse that method over and over and over again have to write the method each time you run a new sample. So right now we're going to create a new method. Uh, if you wanted to, in a normal course of action, we would select method and test. But now there's no methods loaded in the instrument or the software, so we're going to create a new one. So basically how the software works is that there's various tabs going from left to right, um, drop down menus within each of those tabs. <coughs> you fill them out with whatever test conditions, test type that you want to have happen, and then you can see the method. Something to note is that if at any time you have a question as to what any of these fields mean, in the upper left-hand corner, you can click on the highlighted link, and it'll take you to the help specific to that um, specific to that window, such that you don't have to search you know, through a uh, wide index of uh, help issues. So right now, uh, this is your system screen. This is kind of where you set up the basics of the test. So right now you have two different modules, two different test modes, single and control. So single is applying one force in one direction per test, whereas control, you can change directions. Um, so for instance, you want to do cyclic type testing. Uh, you wanted to put a complex variety of folds on uh, different ramp rates. That's where the control software would be uh, useful. Test type, this is where you get textile compression three-point bending, four-point bending. We also have peel testing, but then also the compliance correction that you were talking about. <coughs> like I said, here's your different uh, test types in here. Uh, we'll just do a simple tensile test right here, because that's what's set up. Um, right here, this kind of auto fills up. This is your force polarity or force direction. This is essentially set up as a tensile, meaning that if you pull down on the load cell, it'll be a positive number. Um, if we set up under compression, if we pushed up on the load cell, it'll be, it'll be a positive number. Force direction, this is essentially saying that when we hit the start button, this is the direction that the force will go. Units, you can set up different units. I'm sure that most frequently you'll we'll be using SI numbers. You can also use English units as well, um, and also metric units. You can also change the order of magnitude that these units are in, newtons, kilonewtons. Um, you can also change for stress, newtons per millimeters, but also uh, megapascals as well. Format, this is essentially the uh, how each value will be displayed, whether you want to change the amount of significant figures or the amount of decimal places that are shown. Uh, registering your jigs, this is not necessarily important. It's more for um, record keeping and for reporting. So sensor, this is your sensor tab. Uh, something to kind of note about this frame is that the only two sensor inputs that you're taking, uh, if you don't have an extensometer, is your force read by the load cell and your crosshead stroke measured by an encoder on the back of the servo loader. Uh, everything else is a calculation. So this is essentially how you set up those uh, sensors. Uh, the force uh, is auto-filled in when you do your e-calibration. Um, a certain situation where you might want to change these are if you're using a jig uh, that is of a lower capacity than your load cell. So for instance, if you're using your 100 kilonewton um, three-point bending jig with your 100 kilonewton load cell, you probably would want to change these values in here just so you don't overload the jig. Uh, stroke, 
this is um, automatically calculated as well. But this is important because this is where you set up your software limit for the stroke. So like I said, you can set up hardware limits with the top and bottom uh, limit switches, but you can also set up um, software limits as well. So down here is your extensometer. Uh, we'll probably go over setting this up in a second, uh, but this is where you would set up either your optical extensometer, the TWX, or the um, uh, contacting type extensometer. Here's your width extensometer. Again, you can set up the TRVUX to do width mode, um, but if you wanted a contacting ex extensometer, if you're trying to measure Poisson's ratio, for instance, um, you could set that up here. Uh, others, so I didn't point this out earlier, but you do have uh, some analog inputs via BNC connectors. Uh, this is where you can input other data uh, into the TRAPCMX software to be logged, so either temperature data, uh, we have customers that want to measure resistance data on their samples as they're being tensile tested. So through an external amplifier feeding into the frame, uh, you can set up uh, other sensors as well. So define, here's where you can define a sensor. And essentially this is kind of like a virtual sensor. So whereas the only thing that's actually measured in real life, like I said, are the force and the displacement, uh, through a little calculator brought up by edit, uh, you can bring up virtual sensors. So these are things that are calculated automatically, like your stress or your strain, or you can write a formula for yourself. So I've seen customers that have maybe torsional jigs that are put in here, different than those kind of torsional jigs, where you kind of want to use the geometry of the jig uh, to calculate some value like the force on your sample. So this kind of adds um, a little bit of variability and expandability to the uh, software itself. And also if you want to log those stress values or those strain values, um, you could do that through here as well. And when I say log, so if you want to export the data, uh, we do have a reporting function, but if you want to export the data into a CSV format, the only thing that you're going to export is those two data channels, your force and your displacement. If you wanted to export a strain channel, um, you would have to add that in here as well. All right, that's it for the sensors tab. We'll move on to testing. So here in testing, uh, in a single mode, you have up to four segments that you can test in. Um, and this is where you actually set the parameters for what the frame is going to do once you hit the start button. Uh, so more traditionally, it's controlling off stroke millimeters per minute. But if you really wanted to, you could control off stress or force. So for instance, a newton per second. Right here between the segments, uh, right now it says off. And that's saying that nothing kind of dictates it moving from one segment to the other. The thing that dictates the stop of the test is the brake detect, which we kind of touched on earlier. So your brake detection is right here. Uh, that's what stops the instrument when the sample breaks. There's three modes of brake detection. There's sensitivity, level percent full scale, level, level percent max. Sensitivity looks for a certain drop in force uh, as the test is running. So as the test is running, uh, the instrument is constantly looking at the last 100 milliseconds of the test. If within those 100 milliseconds, it sees a drop in force of 10%, it'll stop the test. Uh, level percent full scale, it looks at the full scale of the load cell. And if the force drops down to, in this case, 0.02% of that full scale, it'll stop the test. This is kind of the catch-all, whereas your actual break is usually happening here. You have this to kind of stop things as that force drops to a very low value. Level percent max is very similar to level percent full scale, except it doesn't take into consideration the full scale of the load cell, but rather the max force that that test has seen so far. Um, break and limit action. This is saying that after the break, what's it going to do? Is it going to stop the test? You can also return to your zero position. Uh, if you're doing rigid metal samples, I don't recommend this feature because the sample is probably elongated. If you were to bring back to that uh, original position, most likely the samples will collide with each other, or the remnant of the sample will collide with each other. Sampling, uh, you can change your sampling rate in here. Uh, the only time I've seen people do this, <coughs> excuse me, is if they're taking large amounts of data, if they're holding for long periods of time and they don't want to export that large amount of data, they'll sometimes lower the sampling rate. Uh, Pre-test, here's where you can put a preload on your sample. So for certain situations where you have flimsy samples or you're doing wire on capstan grips, you want to put a certain preload on your sample before the test actually starts. Uh, you can do that in this segment right here. And essentially what you do is you dictate how fast you want to preload. 
and the point at which you want to stop that preload and start the test. Um, usually your preload speed is at a lower speed than your actual test, um, such that you're not putting any kind of forces on your sample that it wouldn't see during normal testing. Um, again, these are kind of used for flimsy samples where you want to take the slack out of it before the test starts. Uh, I've also seen this used in three-point bending where you want to slowly bring your loading nose uh, down to contact the sample, but not necessarily at the speed that you're going to be running the test. Um, because if you can imagine, if your loading nose is above the test, it's kind of coming down on the sample, there's going to be a higher force that's imparted on it than if it was kind of slightly touching the sample and then starting the test. So that's another way that you might want to use the preload. Um, so to go into the different segments, like I said, you can run one segment, which is most common uh, to failure, but you can also have different segments as well. You can change the uh, changing of the segments by a sensor. So these are sensors that we looked at before, your stroke sensor, your stress sensor, your force sensor, um, and then a value for that sensor. So essentially, we'll just say stroke. We'll put in 10 millimeters. What it's basically, basically saying is that it's going to load at a stroke of 1 millimeter per minute until the stroke value gets to 10 millimeters, then it will transfer to the different segment. Right now, it's set to off. We could set it to hold so it holds for a certain duration. Uh, we can also set it to another loading segment as well. Um, this is kind of common that if a customer wants to look at their elastic region at a very low speed, but they want to see the brake force at a relatively higher speed, um, you can do that here as well. So as opposed to sensor, you would say yield point, set up the, uh, where your yield point will, will occur. And essentially what this is saying is that It'll load at a low rate until you hit your yield point, and then it'll move to the next segment, which commonly put at a faster, uh, faster test rate. So, like I said, there's a lot of variability in the types of tests you can do it here. And when we go over the control software, it expands even more. Um, again, most common is is um, testing to failure, which uh, happens in the first segment.